I'm gonna show you how you can use this on a variety of foods in your kitchen, and I'm gonna show you how to use every side of the box grater, not just the big holes. Let's get started. But first, have you subscribed to this channel? If not, do so now, and don't forget to click the bell so you never miss a good tutorial like this. Obviously, we are going to use cheese on our cheese grater, but let me show you how you can use that cheese on more than just the big hole side. The big holes are going to give you your classic shredded cheese. Perfect for quesadillas, tacos, to put on top of chili, that sort of thing. But this side right here is for slicing. You know, sometimes it is more cost effective to buy a big block of cheese, but you can create those nice sandwich slices on the slicing side. The small holes are for finer shreds. These are great for pasta or on top of a salad, something like that where you don't need a big hunk of cheese. And then finally, the super small pokey hole side. This is for the harder cheeses. What you don't wanna do is try to smash the cheese through those holes. This is meant to just rub the cheese on the side and let it fall off. Ideal for things like Parmesan and hard cheeses. That is how to use all four sides with cheese, but this grater can be way more useful than you think it is. This is probably the side that people use the least, but it can come in handy, especially if you don't have a mandolin. Now this is not going to create super sheer slices like a mandolin would, but they're pretty thin, and this is perfect if you wanna create some potatoes au gratin or layered vegetable dishes. Just simply slide through, and you've got some nice thin slices of vegetables. Potatoes work great here as well. This is great for potato chips. That would also work well for thin slices uh, vegetables like radishes or turnips, anything like that. The big hold side probably to me is the most useful side, but for way more than cheese. This is perfect for grating other vegetables. You know, you wanna sneak some veggies into muffins or cakes using the big hold side is great for carrots, zucchini, cabbage, and even our good friend, the cauliflower. Have you seen me make cauliflower rice yet? If not, you might not be subscribed to this channel. You should do that right now. This is one of the easiest ways to make cauliflower rice if you're making it in small batches and you don't wanna break out your big food processor. All right, why well stop there? Cabbage is great if you're making coleslaw. This is a super easy way to get those fine shreds. The big holes are also great for shredding potatoes for potato cakes or hash browns. Those shreds will get good and crispy when they're fried, making the perfect cake. Those might all seem like obvious choices. I'm gonna show you a few not so obvious choices. What about hard boiled eggs for egg salad or tuna salad, something like that? I think you get the point with the big hold side. Let's flip it over to the smaller holds. This creates fine shreds of cheese like I showed you before, but this is also great for cooked potatoes. If you don't have a ricer but you want fluffy mashed potatoes, take a baked potato and run it over the side of those fine holes. You're left with this fluffy potato filling that's perfect for really fluffy mashed potatoes. I like to use the small hold side for the same things I would use a microplane for. So grating citrus zest or garlic, if you want some you know, grated garlic or ginger, this works great, especially if you need large amounts. Probably one of my favorite ways to use the, this side of your box grater is to make fresh breadcrumbs. Take some stale bread or some toasted bread and just run it along the grater. Perfect, super fine breadcrumbs. The harder and crustier the bread, the easier this would be. A great use for the box grater is to grate cold butter. This is perfect if you're making biscuits or pie crust where you need to cut in that butter. The butter does need to be super cold, if not frozen. When you need flecks of butter in your flour, the result will be super fluffy dough. One of my final ingredients to show you that you can also use on your box grater is chocolate. This will give you that grated chocolate that's the perfect complement on top of some chocolate pudding or a chocolate pie. This is not gonna curl like it would using a vegetable peeler, but close enough. And for my final trick, I'm going to show you one non-food item that's perfect for a grater. Laundry soap. I didn't even know this was a thing. One of our video editors told me about this trick of grating laundry soap right into the washing machine. So when I went to buy this, I realized why they may use this in their home, because it is super inexpensive. This whole bar of soap is about a dollar. There are no instructions as far as how much you need for a load of laundry, but it smells great. And I guess you just grate some down and throw it in the washing machine. That's pretty cool. 
So here are at least a dozen ways that you can use this box grater other than for grating cheese. And I forgot to mention, quality does matter. Invest in a good box grater. It will be worth it. For more great videos like this, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and follow my recipes on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. See you next time. Wasn't that great?